Guys, we already talked about lot many things in uh, first part. Uh, as that video was uh, already crossed two hours, so uh, I decided to create another one. Uh, so we we talked about big data quite in detail. Uh, we found uh, and we try to look at different resources uh, of uh, big data from where the data is getting generated and uh, uh, how the uh, extremely high volume of data uh, which is getting generated with high velocity and variety of data is there which is uh, uh, impacting lot many things okay now as you <coughs> Uh, as you can see this image, in this image you can see that uh, we uh, we talked about uh, different data sources and we also uh, we also started the Hadoop ecosystem. Uh, we covered HDFS quite in detail uh, uh, and we talked everything what is possible about HDFS. Now, today we will, uh, right now, we will talk about YAN. So, uh, the full form of YAN, so YAN stands for yet another resource negotiator. Uh, YAN was introduced in Hadoop 2.0. Uh, earlier it was not there, earlier uh, in the first version of Hadoop, that is Hadoop 1.0. Uh, it was, your MapReduce was directly interacting with your uh, HDFS. So, this particular layer was not there in the system uh, of your uh, ecosystem. And at that particular time, Spark was also not part of it. <coughs> uh, Yan is a resource manager and uh, uh, Yarn takes care of uh, all the jobs which are coming from different places. Yarn also takes care of uh, all the different uh, uh, allocations kind of things. Your Yarn architect basically separates resource manager layer from process layer. So, YAN also allow different, different processing engines like your graphic uh, processing if there is like some, some graphic processing is there or some interactive processing is there or streaming is there or so lot many such type of uh, processing, drag processing and other one to run and process the data stored in the Hadoop distributed file system that is your HDFS to making the system such more efficient. So the job of your YAN is to maintain all the different jobs yep. so to maintain different jobs and uh, taking care of resource in that. For large volume of data processing, it is quite necessary to manage the available resource properly so that every application can leverage them. Okay. <clears throat> when we talk about resources, so what are the resources comes in our mind? So uh, your resources like, uh, for example, your memory, for example, your storage space, you 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 have uh, 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 means like uh, the the, the th third third type of thing is processing uh, ability. So how much processing we should assign to the system? Okay. So these are the things which are taken care in Yarn. And uh, uh, I will say 
फीचर्स ऑफ यान तो यान गेट और यान गेन्ड पॉपुलरिटी बिकॉज ऑफ द वंडरफुल फीचर्स फर्स्ट वन इज योर स्केलेबिलिटी तो स्केलेबिलिटी द स्केड्यूलर्स इन रिसोर्स मैनेजर ऑफ यान आर्किटेक्चर allows hadoop to extend and manage thousands and thousands of nodes and clusters at a time so scalability is one of the most important thing right here then compatibility so uh, yarn supports existing map reduce application without disturbing to making it compatible with hadoop 1.0 as well okay so your yarn is compatible clustering cluster utilizations since yarn supports dynamic utilization of cluster in hadoop which is or which enables optimized cluster utilization so it plays an important role of handling clusters and uh, assigning it to different sources another is your multi tenancy so what it is it, it allows multiple engines accessing to given organizations a benefit of multiple tenancy so what what we are doing in all these different places my resource manager is in center multiple clients are trying to submit their jobs and my resource ma manager is handling these jobs with the help of their schedulers application managers node manager application and uh, multiple of them okay and then uh, it it is it is like uh, i will say like a, it keeps everyone happy so client submit an application the resource manager allocate the container to start the application manager the application manager, manager register itself with resource manager the application manager negotiates containers from the resource manager the application manager notify your node manager to launch container application code is executed in the container client contacts resource manager application manager to monitor application status once the process is complete the application manager unregister with the resource manager so these are the steps which are followed in the case of your yarn like yarn uh, like uh, as compared to your uh, previous uh, uh, version of hadoop 1 uh, yarn made the life more easy okay so if if you uh, if you understand this particular thing in a way like uh, uh, without yarn if we are making things uh, so uh, a hadoop one uh, was not so popular as compared to hadoop two because uh, uh, this particular version is the most uh, stable version as of now okay so when we talk about uh, yarn it gives us all these features which are helping uh, uh to manage different resources and do do lot many things okay and uh, your yarn is uh, purely developed in uh, java when we talk about 
like uh, when we talk about the features okay when we talk about the features uh, we can see that it is managing uh, resources it is man it is managing uh, different applications and uh, not many jobs it is performing uh, throughout uh, throughout the application so as it is most uh, nearest to the hdfs where my complete data is available uh it plays an important role right there okay now our next topic is that is your map produce okay so map produce is your programming module okay map produce your module which is uh, like uh, map produce is a programming module and an associated implementation for process and generating big data set with parallel distributed algorithms on a cluster so what what was the scene earlier the scene was my complete data was available uh, my complete data was available uh, <clears throat> uh, MapReduce uh, gives you the connection or programming connection between your HDFS and other different applications which are right there. Or uh, MapReduce itself is capable of uh, giving you the result uh, wherever it is required. So, for uh, for example, you are doing programming in MapReduce. So, like uh, using uh, in MapReduce using uh, using Java, you can do programming, and then uh, using that, you can retrieve data from your HDFS, and then you can give it to your client. MapReduce is a processing technique and a programming module for distributed computing based on Java. MapReduce algorithm contains two important tasks, namely map and reduce. Map takes a set of data and convert it into another set of data where individual elements Broke down the broke down into tuples that is key and value pair. Secondly, reduced task which takes the output from map as an input and combine these data tuples into the small set of tuples as a sequence of name. Map reduce implies the reduced task is always performed after the map job. The major advantage of MapReduce is that it is easy to scale data processing over multiple computing nodes. Under the MapReduce module, the data processing primitives are called mappers and reducers. Decomposing a data processing application into mappers and reducers is sometimes <clears throat> but once we write an application in MapReduce form, scaling the application to run into 100,000 and even 10,000 of machine in a cluster in a merely configuration changes. This simple sca scalable uh, in which has attached more programmers to use MapReduce module when you will perform like uh, when you will be doing uh, your pig programming or you will doing hive or impala uh, every uh, uh, every uh, uh, i will say module 
it converts its complete program into MapReduce and then it retrieve data from HDFS. So if you want to fetch something from HDFS, the basic need is of MapReduce. Okay. Generally, Ma MapReduce paradigm is based on sending the computer to where the data reside. Okay. So we already talked about this like query goes to the data and uh, that is uh, we already talked like it is a tiger approach where data doesn't move to or food doesn't move to the mouth mouth goes to the uh, that particular uh, mouth goes to the food and that's why it is called as tiger approach MapReduce programming executes in three stages names named as map stage shuffle stage and reduce stage so map stage uh, maps the job uh, is to process the input data generally the input data is in the form of file and directory and is stored in hadoop system that is hdfs the input file is passed to the mapper function line by line the mapper function process the data creates several small chunks of data the second is your reduce stage the stage is the combination of shuffle stage and reduce stage the reduced job is to process the data that comes from the mapper after processing it procedures and new set of output which will be stored in hdfs so after completing the process your data is available right there so uh, in the following diagram what we are looking is we are uh, sending one uh, input okay uh, this input is like uh, okay the first is like the problem statement the problem statement is word count process so word count process what we are doing right here is we are counting uh, number of words which are repeated uh, within the file okay so this this is one text file i will say uh, of some x k, k, k b m b or something like that it contains data so first operation is we split the data into uh, three files right now and then these three files we number those elements in the file so that is called as mapping then we perform shuffling shuffling process it what it performs is it takes the data and then uh, like you can see right here that all beer are coming at one place all car are coming at place one uh, all deer are coming at one place and rivers are coming at one place and then we are do performing total of that and then final result is coming in front of us so in this way your map reduce perform jobs okay so th this is like this is one of uh, simple example of that uh, where you can see all the uh, components of map reduce like we perform input then we do splitting we do map then we perform shuffling we do reducing and final result comes into the picture our okay uh, advantage of uh, map reduce programming so your uh, programming we talked about a few of this earlier as well so it is scalable it is cost effective it has flexibility it is fast 
security and authentication, parallel processing, availability and resilient nature, and simple model of program. Uh, like when you will be la landing up doing uh, uh, your map reduce programming, you will find it damn easy. Map reduce programming is very very easy programming language, uh, and uh, it's like lot many people it's like uh, this particular stream it has uh, good scope if you are doing good in that okay so this is about your map produce this is one sample program of word count what we have seen earlier and uh, where you can see that what are the different so uh, we we saw the process we saw the data flow as well everything we have seen right here okay. let's move to the next set of uh, uh, this one that is your scope okay now we already talked about this that scope plume and kafka okay scope plume and kafka are your ingestion tools okay so wherever or whenever you want to inject data okay whenever you want to inject data you want to insert the data whenever you want to insert the data in hdfs you need injection tools for that okay so these are the three injection tools one is who second is your uh, uh flow and third one is your that is your kafka okay flow and scoop they are uh, older stuff and kafka is introduced in hadoop 2 uh, and then it become very fam famous and uh, then uh, i will say like up to one extent it is now uh, playing very important role okay now scoop so scoop starts with uh, i will say like scoop deals only with structured data okay so when i when when i want to move any structured data to your uh, uh, hdfs system or to hadoop i need scoop okay scoop doesn't take care uh or it, it it doesn't talk about any other type of data like unstructured semi-structured data it only takes care of your that is your structured data so structured data we already talked about it like uh, all the data which is in tabular format so that is your that is your scoop okay uh traditional application management system that is the interaction of application with the relational database using rdbms is one of the source generating big data such big data generated by rdbms is stored in relative database servers and relative so when you want to move such type of data to hdfs or to hadoop you need one tool that is scoop now the beauty of scoop is like uh, it performs export and import both okay you don't need to worry about uh, that how data will come and how data will go means like uh, uh, mistake this is practical implementation of this and you people can also try this uh, at your end uh, in one of my project uh oracle ebs project that is uh, uh, we were using oracle erp and uh, in that our reports were taking too much time to execute sometimes it takes uh, uh, one day time to give the output so what we have done is we we moved our data we moved our data to uh, hdfs and then uh, in HDFS, we created reports. So we moved all our uh, Oracle data to 
with the help of scoop we we added schedulers for that and using scheduler every uh, what we say every new data which is inserted in our table is automatically getting inserted in uh, uh with the help of scoop it is added to hdfs and we were generating reports from our hadoop system now the uh, beautiful part of this is like uh, for very large data set my hadoop is very efficient okay so uh, like if i will say for uh, 10 mb 20 mb data or 50 mb data uh, i want to use hadoop then it is not suggestible but when we have 1 gb 2 gb 1 terabyte or more than that something like that then it plays a important role right there and uh, you will get results very quickly so uh, we were importing as well as exporting data using a uh, scoop tool and uh, it was very very efficient right there okay and uh, it's like uh, jobs which were taking a uh, long time in oracle ebs to execute it was getting it was done in a uh, few minutes i will say and uh, the resultant took, and we will we were get, we were getting the output very quickly and it was a positive this is a plus point for as per the project is concerned okay uh, your scoop come come up with very uh, basic commands for uh, all the stuff like for importing and exporting and uh, like if, if you want to uh, perform some other operations so using scoop you can do this thing very quick you can uh, check it out the data uh, what is uh, going in the system so for example i am moving the complete data okay i want to move the complete table data i want to import whole data uh, in one go so very simply you can perform few steps right few commands for that and it is available for that okay you can directly schedule it like uh, once in hour twice in hour or something like that it is absolutely upon you and then you will get the data and you can perform lot many operations by that okay so that is the beautiful thing about scoop okay uh these are the few commands right here uh, your connect user name then uh, table split by target directory uh, field terminated by and lot many things so thank you yes it is very helpful stuff now next set of uh, uh, in the ingestion tool we have loom now we already talked about this like uh, my 80 percent in percent of data is unstructured one and my job is to connect to that 80 percent of data okay now it is not an easy job to connect to 80 percent of data so we need a tool which is useful for connecting to this 80 percent of data okay uh one important thing right here is like uh when we talk about scoop and plume when we talk about scoop and plume uh, they are good for uh, static processes or i will say uh, they are they perform dynamic operations but they are good in the case of static processes static process means like you have a scheduled data and you are performing the operation on that and uh, you are getting the output from the report or anything when we talk about live data or when we talk about dynamically doing the things my plume and my scoop is not that much efficient as uh, as as required okay 
so uh, when we say plume uh, this apache plume is a tool or service or data ingestion mechanism for collecting aggregating and transporting large amount of streaming data from log files events from unstructured data semi structured data and uh, lot many other such type of different sources plume is highly reliable distributed and configurable tool okay its principal design is to copy stream data log data and all the unstructured unstructured data from uh, different sources to my hdfs so if you want to means like you want to visualize it then this is the this is the visual stuff right here so what are the advantages of plume uh, using apache plume we can store the data into any of the centralized storage uh, like your hdfs or hbase or any of other uh, uh, hadoop based database management system then uh, when the rate of incoming data exceeds the rate at which data can be returned to the destination room act as a mediator between data processors and centralize the storage and provide steady flow of data between them plume provides feature of contextual routing the transaction in plume are channel uh, channel based okay where two transaction one is your sender and one is the receiver are maintained for each message it guarantees reliable message delivery plume is reliable fault tolerant fault tolerant scalable manageable and customizable so these are the different features of your plume we have a place from where data is coming then it goes to your source uh like like here if you can see in this image there is one box called as agent so in agent you will find source channel and sync and you will find your hdfs so from your agent it moves to your uh i will say hdfs and further process is done right here okay and these are the very i will say uh, uh elementary uh, things about plume but yes conceptually you must understood that uh, my plume is performing importing exporting whereas uh, in case of my uh, plume i am just exporting the data we are not importing the data uh yes by some other application within my uh, hadoop ecosystem i can generate my reports and i can get the output but yes it is not two way uh, what we have seen in the case of spoon now the next is your kafka now kafka uh, is purely uh when we, when we talk about kafka uh, kafka play an important role in streaming data okay streaming data means where live transactions are taking place and you have to uh, take care of that so kafka helps you so uh, when we are doing everything with respect to your live transactions when we are doing everything with respect to your 
uh, day-to-day operations like we are doing a transaction. Uh, we are swapping the credit card and uh, credit card information goes to the bank server to verify the things and then your transaction gets successful. Uh, then there is some fraud which is happening with respect to your credit card. You are handling that particular fraud uh, and like you all know it very well that it, it happens in in few fractions of second okay it is not something uh, in minutes or even not in half minute it is few seconds in like one or two seconds of time uh, you immediately get a message on your mobile phone that your credit card is used or do you want to continue with this uh, transaction or you get your OTP and lot many things, lot many good features are there. And uh, even in the case when uh, your credit card is used in a different location, unexpected place, like you belongs to one place uh, so somewhere like uh, like city, like um, in any city means like it can be Bhopal. So you belongs to Bhopal, your 99% transactions are from Bhopal. Okay, your credit card company and its uh, internal uh, internal algorithm also know that like your maximum transactions are happening through that particular place and it is not possible that same time same person is in Africa or in some other country and using the same credit card. So you will immediately receive a call from uh, bank saying that someone is accessing your card. Are you, the, are you the same person or do you want to approve that particular transaction? Are you, did you share your information with someone so he is using that information? and lot many things. So this is one example of your Kafka playing an important role and uh, like it is so efficient of for transferring the data from one uh, system to another one and getting the resultant from it. Okay, so that is the reason we use Kafka right here and uh, we get output from it uh, and uh, it plays an important role. Uh, Kafka is uh, initially developed by LinkedIn company, just for your knowledge, I'm just telling you. And then it uh, moved to your open source uh, community. So then it became Apache Kafka. Yesterday we talked, it's like uh, we talked about open community, uh, open source community and all these things. So, uh, this is the, uh, I will say, very, very simple architecture of your, uh, it's like basic, I will say, basic architecture of your Kafka, where you are taking the transaction. Your transaction is coming in the form of procedure. Uh, your Kafka cluster performs some job on it, and then it converts it into the consumer, and then moves ahead within the okay so uh, there are five major api in kafka uh, which play an important role right there so, so one is your procedure api permits an application to publish streamings of records your consumer api permits an application to submit to topics and processes streams of records your connector api executes the reusable procedures and consumer API that can link to the topic to existing application. Then you have streaming application. These application converts your input stream to the output and procedure the result. And last one is your admin API uses to manage your topic, your brokers and other Kafka objects. Now, guys, uh, just like we we took one example of your credit card fraud. Uh, in the same way, these days, like 
there are infinite devices which are uh, connected for your online transactions and your status and all those things like you book your railway ticket uh, you put the information and at the same moment uh, like it is it is not uh, i will say like one person is accessing uh, ircdc website uh, millions of people are accessing ircdc website at a time everyone patches uh, different information set of people are patching same information and then they all are getting that particular information they whether if they are booking or not booking whatever it is there and according to that at the same moment my uh, back end server where my all the train information is there is getting updated so if you are uh, if you are booking a seat it is getting updated if you are cancelling a seat it is again getting updated and lot many things it is purely live and streaming data it is not something which is static one it is purely dynamic one so when we talk of dynamic data kafka plays an important role right there and i just repeatedly want to say that like uh, uh, the earlier system that is your uh, scoop which was taking care of your uh, structure data and the another set of this one that is your plume which was taking care of your unstructured data but the issue uh, was right there was it was not so efficient for dynamic processing whereas in the case of your kafka it is purely uh, it is purely on your uh, uh, dynamic stuff and it insists purely on the dynamic things uh, we took two examples of that and uh, try to understand and correlate it with your day to day work whatever is there when when you book a ticket in uh, book my show okay you go to uh, go, you select one theater you select uh, one movie and then you find that only two tickets are available okay and luckily or unluckily or uh, fortunately or unfortunately uh, same time total 10 people are connected and everyone is looking for those two tickets uh, to be booked now as this is purely uh, streaming stuff it is purely dynamically updating stuff you are you are any one of you can click it and book it okay so the person who will perform the operation very first he will insert the credit card data insert the pin he insert the otp and he insert and he completes it uh, operation then that specific person will able to book the ticket it is not that once someone is accessing that data other cannot see that one it is live available for everyone but the person who completes the transaction will get that particular seat okay so uh, there there are lot many comparisons and lot many other stuff right there for your uh scoop room and kafka uh like offline you can go through those things and uh but as time permits uh, the time doesn't permit me to uh take everything quite in detail we we will switch to the next stuff in the category now we are talking about uh your uh one of the one of the query tool uh, that is your uh, pig okay uh, now like uh, if you can see the name pig uh, so actually it doesn't mean anything okay uh, don't correlate it with anything it is just a name so it is 
is not kept purposefully or it is not uh, done something like that uh, only you know, one uh, i will i will say one only thinking behind uh, this particular name is like uh, they thought that it is going to consume everything it is going to consume structured and structured semi structured data so as a pig can consume anything in the same way my uh, this particular uh, application that is pig it is going to consume everything or it will retrieve data whatever type of data is there it will give me the output okay so no, just ignore if something is coming in your mind uh, with with respect to its name so it is not at all related to anything uh, that why we kept its name pig okay so guys apache tool uh, this apache pig uh, like uh, okay let's go to the definition apache pig is a high level platform for creating programs that runs on apache hadoop the language for the platform is called as pig latin pig can be execute its hadoop job in mapreduce uh, apache tez and apache spark spark latin your pig latin abstract the programming from the java mapreduce idiom into notations which makes mapreduce programming high level similar to your sql for relational database management system pig latin can be extended using user def defined functions udf which is use uh, which, which which the user can write in java python javascript ruby ruby and then call directly from the language uh, like those people who are familiar with uh, uh, pl sql sql like uh, uh, you are good with your uh, oracle or you know, your ms access or uh, other uh, sql languages right there so if you know select command you if you know insert update delete and very simple commands uh, right there so if you people are familiar with all these things then uh, for you hive pig and impala is best choice for like uh, for doing the things like <coughs> Uh, when you see your pick command, it is absolutely uh, and it is purely like your SQL commands. A uh, little bit syntax is uh, changed in that, but major syntax are same. There is no change, and it is absolutely very very easy stuff. Okay, uh, we we are talking about uh, all these things uh, within within the scope of your uh, Hadoop and Hadoop ecosystem. So you will find like few important thing right there is like one is it is open source. It is very easy to learn. Okay, the guy, those people who have little bit background of uh, programming, then for them it is damn easy. Like we talk about Python language, we talk about Python language. So Python is very very easy language. Okay, uh, Python and Scala they both are hand to hand languages and uh, when we talk about uh, python okay uh, or when we talk about scala language uh, scala is majorly uh, used uh, in the case of your big data hadoop uh, another important language for your big data hadoop is your java language but what i suggest is like uh, better go for Scala because uh, it will be very helpful for a uh, lot many other things. Okay, now when you are performing your uh, queries using pig or you are performing uh, this one using your uh, pig, hive, impala, any one of them, they are purely uh, looks like your uh, another uh, query stuff 
any SQL or anything like that, and then uh, you can you can access it from anywhere, and you can uh, e easily perform lot many operations with that. Okay, uh, you have the normal SQL queries uh, right there. You don't have anything complex right in this. Okay, I will I will suggest you that you. Uh, definitely go to uh, these and understand that how 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 it is uh, like uh, I will not use uh, it is not same but is it is correlated to the same uh, and it is look look like the same as you can see the uh, other languages and uh, it, first thing is it is very easy okay now if you want to say something like you want to perform uh, or you want to compare between your uh, pig and map reduce so uh, apache pig is a data flow language and map reduce is a data processing paradigm your apache pig is high level language Whereas your map reduce is a low level like low level language. Apache Pig perform a join operation in Apache Pig is pretty simple. <coughs> Whereas as compared to Apache Pig, it is quite difficult in map reduce to perform join operations and all those things. Okay. Uh, like your basic knowledge of SQL can work uh, in the case of Apache Pig. So when we talk about MapReduce, uh, MapReduce is actually purely work on Java. So you should have a good knowledge of Java for MapReduce. Okay. Uh, actually, I don't find it complex, but uh, yes, like for few people, it may be a uh, little bit complex. Okay. Uh, MapReduce is multi-query approach, uh, and it reduces your length of code. Uh, sorry, uh, your Apache Pig uses multi-query approach, and uh, it reduces length of your code. Uh, your code, and your MapReduce require almost twenty times more uh, than the number of lines performed. For the same task so when we like uh, it is a normal thing actually uh, it is not something new uh, at all so when you write a program in scala or python uh, you will find that in the case of scala or python you uh, you are writing less code as compared to java so normally we we we, we talk like 10 20 times more uh, coding you have to do more in the case of your uh, java when you write any similar or equivalent code for the same and when you say there is no need to <coughs> no need of compilation so in case of apache pig you don't need to compile anything uh, whereas uh, as it is java you have to perform compilation uh, in case of your map reduce and if you compare you uh, means like uh, compare the normal query that is your normal sql with pig so pig latin is a procedural language okay it is like your pl sql and uh, whereas your sql is declarative kind of thing okay uh, data model in your pig uh, is nested one where else in your case of normal query it is your flat relation there is no nested things right there and apache pick provides you limited opportunity to query optimization okay so um, there is more opportunity in case of sql for performing optimization and all these things okay right here if we uh, go uh, means like in addition to the above differences of Apache Latin, uh, we also come uh, this 
Apache Pig allow you splitting in the pipeline, allowing developers to store data anywhere in the pipeline, declare execution plan and provides operation to perform EPL, that is your extract, transform and load function. So guys, I think like uh, we, we, we talked a lot about uh, uh, Apache Pig and uh, again it is for the same stuff what we are doing right here is we are extracting data from HDFS and uh, you can find lot much material with respect to your uh, Pig <coughs> on uh, on internet and you can explore it all those things okay? <coughs> sorry now next is your hive so again uh, as we are talking about hive so hive is a data warehousing infrastructure tool to process structured data in hadoop it resides in the it, it resides on the top of hadoop to summarize big data and make queries and analysis okay so again the same stuff what you have seen earlier it uh, helps you to perform query all these uh, tools like uh, whether it is your uh, a uh, pig or your hive or impala or anything everything goes through your map produce and uh, it it functions on the basis of that and it patches the information and uh, do the same query kind of stuff right here and uh, uh, it gives you the it gives you the same stuff what you uh, find in the case of Pick. only the uh, approach is little bit different uh, when we uh, when we talk about these different products okay like as i already told you uh, uh, about <coughs> uh, about map reduce and we talked about yarn we talked about hdfs uh, when we talk about apache hive uh, apache hive is initially developed by facebook and later it moves to your open source and uh, it is then be part of your uh, open source community and it becomes apache hive when we talk about hive so we should we should say like hive is not a uh, relational database okay so you should not uh, compare it with relational database uh, or hive is not a design for your oltp and hive is not a language for real time query and row level updates Okay, so like it should be quite clear in your mind that what is your Hive. And when we talk about the features of Hive, it stores schemas in database and processes data into HDFS. It is designed for, it is designed for OLTP. It provides SQL type language for querying and it is called as Hive QL. Like we have SQL. That is, that, that is structured query language. So, in case of Hive, it is called as Hive query language or HQL. It is familiar, faster, scalable, and extendable. Okay. So, when we talk about Hive, okay, when we talk about when we talk about Hive, uh, as I already told you, everything goes to MapReduce. It is not something uh, where you stick map reduce in between and uh, it, it takes a path where everything needs to be converted into 
mass produced and then it goes to the next level so you i will say like uh, uh, it follows uh, i will say following path for uh, operating so first one is execute query hive interface uh one moment <coughs> uh hive hive interface uh, uh, such as command line and uh, web ui sends the query to driver and database drivers such as your jdbc odbc to execute second step is get plan the driver takes the help of query compiler that parses the query to check the syntax and query plan or the requirement of query then third is your get metadata the compiler sends the metadata query request to your meta store any database and then fourth step is send metadata metadata sends metadata sorry <coughs> and responses to compiler then step 5 is send plan the compiler checks the requirement and send the plan to the driver up to here the parser and the compiling of the query is completed step number 6 is your execute plan the driver sends the execution plan to the execution engine then you perform execute 